In today's OpenGL demo, I am showing off this scene here that uses parallax mapping, HDR, and Bloom. So as you can see here, we have two cubes, one with this brick texture and one which is a light source. So I can push T and that pauses the scene. And you can see that the bricks are actually sort of 3D. And if we come up to the very edge, you can see that the bricks stick out more than the concrete in the rest of the brick texture. However, if we push space, we can flatten the image and return it to a regular 2D image just with normal mapping. And then for the high dynamic range in Bloom, if we push the plus key on our keyboard, we can turn up how bright our light source is. And these values can far exceed just the typical 0 to 1 that you normally have. And we can go minus to turn the light source back down and eventually bring it to 0. Just like that. All right, so to show, how, show off how this works, let's first cover how we do the parallax mapping. So what we do is we have this texture, which is, it's the shape of the bricks, it's just black or white, and this tells our code where to indent everything and bring it down, or where to leave parts where they are flat on the plane. And then if we go to our fragment shader, we take in the display texture, and then we have this function here, parallax mapping. So we set two floats, a min layers and a max layers, and then we set a numbers of layers equal to a mix between the two based on our view direction. So if we're staring at it directly head on, we don't need as many layers as they're not gonna be visible compared to us staring from the side. And then we get a layer depth which is equal to one minus the number of layers. Then we calculate current layer depth, so it starts at zero. We get this vector 2p, delta text coordinates, which is p divided by our number of layers. And then in this part of the code, we take in the display texture as our current depth map. And while that's less than our current layer depth, we subtract the delta text chords from the current text chords until we get to it where it's true. And then we do a little bit more math here, but in the end, we return a final text chords. So what this does is basically, when the texture does not, when the actual colors on the texture, it has to compare those to the black and white values on that display texture. And if the display texture says that it should be further back, then it will physically move the text coordinates back until they're about at line up. And that's how we get this illusion, because it's not actually 3D, but this illusion of 3D depth. And then once we're done with this, we can move on to high dynamic range in the bloom. And the way this works is once we finish rendering the scene, we have our frag color, we first map it. So what this does is, or we first set it, we first set the exposure of minus frag color times one minus vec three, which this this brings the ranges. So before this, if we look at our code here, we have this value called light strength, and in our main code, light strength can be any number between. 20 and 0. So what this does is it clamps the values between 0 and 1, but it does it in a way where you don't just set anything greater than 20 equal to 1 or anything, and we don't do values negatively. But And before this, like if we just took this color right here and then just displayed that to the screen, once we got past 1.0, it would just clamp it. So anything that's that bright just stays that bright and you kind of get this weird white color that washes over everything. So that's why we do this. And then we get a float brightness, which is equal to the average of these three values. And if that is greater than one, we set bright color, which is a location one out. So instead of frag color, we can output bright color. 
if it's greater than one, we output what the actual color was. Otherwise we output all zeros. And then what we can do with this is we have down here, we have, let's see, what was it? So we have this frame buffer right here, FPF, and this has two color buffers. So the first color buffer is the frag color, which we saw up here, and then the second one is bright color. So we we render the entire scene onto this frame buffer, and then we split it into the regular frag color and the regular, and then the bright color buffer. And then with that bright color buffer, we run it through this frame buffer. And what this one does is it's actually two frame buffers and we render it into this blur vertex and blur fragment. And this just applies a Gaussian blur. So a blur that it's just a kind of blur that makes everything look blurry on top of the bright colors. So what this means is that we have two frame buffers, one with the regular scene and then one with all the super bright colors plus a little bit of a blur. And once we have that, at the very end, we draw both of these back to a quad. So just a two triangles, six vertices, and that is these two. And what this does is it simply takes both of them and adds them together, then clamps the values again, just to make sure that after adding both of them, we didn't get past one. And then we display that as our color. So what this does is if we pause our scene here, you can see that right now nothing's glowing, but as I hold down plus, our light keeps getting brighter and brighter. And you can see that it's got this glowing effect. And as we hold the minus sign down, right there, you can see the glow turning on and off. So this is when the light's brighter than 1.0, and this is exactly at 1.0. And then as we increase it, the strength of the glow gets stronger and stronger. And if you're wondering how to apply that normal map, so when we run our scene and we push space and everything's flat, how we, get the, how we still get the light to curve around the inside of the bricks, you should click on this video here where I explain normal mapping and how to do that. And until next time, see ya.